Under the African sun, the dry grasslands bleed a darker tone of gold, and when the sun is highest, the wildlife takes refuge in the shade. A family of spotted hyenas are resting among the bushes. Their young cubs are just a few weeks old, and they're already bouncing with playful curiosity. But these cubs have been born into a very competitive world, one in which they'll constantly fight for dominance, with sisters beating out their brothers. Unlike most other mammals, spotted hyenas live in matriarchal societies led by alpha females. In these clans, females dictate the social structure. They do most of the hunting and raise cubs as single mothers. Females are also larger and more aggressive than males, dominating over them. In fact, in a clan's strict hierarchy, adult males rank last. Even the highest ranking males are below the lowest ranking females, and so they must take abuse from youngsters or risk punishment from the sisterhood. And when it's time to feed, these males eat last, if there's even anything left. Spotted hyenas live in very complex societies, more so than any other carnivorous mammal. These clans can consist of up to 80 members, with multiple groups of female-led lineages. But there's a strict social hierarchy. At the top, there's an alpha female, followed by her young, and then all other females with their young. These families are organised by how their heads relate to each other. Sometimes a small high-ranking group may be overthrown if challenged by a coalition of lower-ranking groups. Finally, at the bottom end is the highest-ranking immigrant male, followed by other immigrant males. Typically, females spend their entire lives within their birth clan, but males leave to find other groups, possibly to avoid inbreeding. By doing this, they'll enter the new group as the lowest ranking hyena in the hierarchy. They'll behave submissively to others, regardless of their size or fighting ability. It's a sacrifice these males are willing to make, because then they'll gain access to sexually receptive females. When it comes to mating, female spotted hyenas strongly prefer mating with immigrants and almost all offspring in a clan are fathered by immigrant males. They also prefer less aggressive partners. In fact, males will show submissive behaviour when approaching females to mate. But even mating can be a very complicated process. Females have no external vaginal opening. Instead, they have an enlarged clitoris, shaped and positioned like a penis. Exactly why this pseudopenis has evolved is unclear, but it may serve as an anti-rape device. To mate, males must position themselves at just the right angle to enter the female's genitalia. Successful mating requires the full cooperation of the female, and so she has complete control over who she chooses to mate with. The pseudopenis was also believed to be an evolutionary side effect of exposure to high androgen levels in the womb. For example, androgens, like testosterone, are as high in females as they are in males. In this study, researchers found that dominant mothers pump a helpful dose of these hormones into male and female offspring, giving them a powerful head start in the game of survival. It was thought that this exposure also led to the unusual growth in the clitoris. But when pregnant hyenas were given drugs that blocked these hormones, their female cubs still had the same masculine body parts. Spotted hyenas are the only species in the hyenid family to have pseudopenises. They're also the only ones to live in matriarchal societies. At the peak of hyenid diversity in the late Miocene period, around 6 to 12 million years ago, at least 24 different species roamed Eurasia and Africa. These included the tough bone crackers and many that looked and behaved like dogs. Since then, the family has declined in species diversity and geographic range, and now there are only four left, the spotted, striped and brown hyenas, 
and the Aardwolf, with the spotted hyena diverging from its closest relatives around 9 million years ago. So how did female dominance come to evolve only in this species? Well, to understand that, we should look at how females came to live together in the first place. The open African grasslands and abundant herbivores may have created an environment that favoured this female group living. In open habitats, kills can be detected by competitors over long distances, so defending both kills and territories requires cooperation between individuals. Because of this, selection may have acted to favour mothers and their offspring, who remain together after weaning. This is usually the case for mothers and their daughters, because in mammals, males tend to leave in search for mates. Mothers, daughters and sisters could have then come to tolerate one another and maintain their close relationships throughout their lives. And in high population densities, multiple hyena families could work together to defend larger territories. These ecological factors may have set the stage for the more complex matriarchal society. In spotted hyenas, low sexual dimorphism may have also set the stage. Although females are larger than males, they're only around 10% heavier. These similarities in size and strength helped balance the power between the two sexes and allowed for other ways to establish dominance. One of these ways may have involved social support. Because males leave their birth group and females stay, these females end up building strong bonds with each other, especially if they're related. Individuals with a bigger family have greater social support, and those with greater social support may be more assertive and more likely to win challenges. Immigrant males often have no relatives when they enter a new clan, and so they don't have any allies. Male bias dispersal could have driven the evolution of female dominance. Polyandry may have played a key role in this too. When females have multiple mating partners, this can create uncertainty about who the father is, which generally reduces the amount of care fathers give, as well as bonding between them and their offspring. This in turn reduces social support for males even further. For the spotted hyena, life as a male is no laughing matter. But male reproductive success isn't directly related to social rank. Instead, it strongly depends on how well one conforms to female preferences. In the end, putting up with female dominance is just a small price these males pay to ensure their own reproductive success. <laughs>